So now we're moving to German new objectivity. And before we get into new objectivity, we need to talk about World War I. And the reason we need to talk about World War I is German new objectivity exists because of World War I. It is a reaction to the war, but you need to understand how horrific this war really is because as Americans, we don't tend to think about it much. And here I'm going to start with some numbers, and numbers don't really get at what's going on. So if you look at these numbers, if you look at the left column, this is total mobilized in each country. So Russia, we have 12 million men mobilized. In France, 8.4 million. In Great Britain, 8.9 million, etc. Right down the line. Where it gets really disturbing is of those people who are mobilized... Here are the percentages who are casualties. In other words, prisoners or wounded, wounded significantly, in other words, taken off the battlefield, killed and died. Those would all be casualties. And here we're seeing Russia, France uh, at 76%, Great Britain at 35% of all those mobilized. Uh, so, I mean, these are tons of people. Great Britain, three point, almost 3.2 million casualties Russia 9.1 million people and it gets worse as you move down so Austria Hungary loses 90% of all the people mobilized and as a percentage of population I mean some of these numbers don't look that bad so France at 4% but you have to remember that's 4% who are killed we know that killed is between one half and one third of all casualties. So we can, let's just double that and call it 8% in France. So 8% of the people in France will be killed or wounded in the war. And double that again because we're only dealing with men. So 16% of men, one in six roughly, is either killed or significantly injured in the war. That's going to have huge implications. And in other places, such as Germany, we see 3.5%. We see it even worse. For example, Serbia, 16%. That's incredible. That's just a huge percentage of the, the male population, or the Ottoman Empire, 23%. So, real briefly, let's run through some quick things with the war. First of all, Germany hoped to quickly defeat France by shooting right through. That does not happen. Instead, we have trench warfare. We see a picture on the right giving you some idea of what that's like and yes there are actual bodies just sitting in the trench there it's part of trench warfare not the only horrible part though as we'll see uh, we see these incredible slaughters by 1916 the trenches have become particularly elaborate they're really not moving uh, they're really not moving after the fall of 1914 in between them we have this no man's land with barbed wire this horrific barbed wire that can be five feet high and 30 feet wide that people are trying to crawl through and it just tangles you and you're sort of stuck there for machine guns etc to take out you also see concrete machine gun nests so there's really no way of destroying the machine guns in terms of tactics we think of going over the top into this blistering fire and and that does happen but what often happens is they're going over the top behind artillery. So there's artillery landing, uh, hopefully a couple hundred yards ahead of them, so that the enemy keeps their head down. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't work real well. And in fact, what happens is we keep throwing tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of soldiers into exactly the same conditions, and we get exactly the same result. For example, in 10 months, 700,000 men will die over a few miles of land at Verdun. This is a war of attrition. This is a meat grinder. This is throwing people into the meat grinder. It's particularly horrific. But remember, the civilians don't see it. Here we have a picture of one of those trenches. And this is what's left behind, just wounded, well, in this case, dead. And what's happened is this isn't a mass grave that suddenly exploded. This was a trench. So what's happening is you frequently don't have the ability to move your dead. So if they die in no man's land, they stay there. You could have a hole that a shell landed, it killed a bunch of people, they're there, and two years later, 
After being buried by other shells that land nearby, they take a direct hit again, and all the bodies are suddenly exposed. It's very horrific, and that's really an understatement. This is the first time we're seeing Total War, where we're basically involving everyone, mostly those that are mobilized. And we see incredible propaganda. This is where new objectivity gets uh, starts to come in because governments are saying they're saying no it wasn't that bad this was actually really glorious this was a great thing look at us we're England look at us we're Germany you know we made it through the great war we're still here and see that's the problem from the German new objectivity perspective the civilians are a quick to forget what happened during the war and b they weren't that exposed to it to begin with, which means they're more prone to go to war again because it's a thing they watched at a distance. They weren't actually there. German New Objectivity wants to prevent a future war by showing these civilians what war really is.